This is Procurement Weekly, brought to you by GovPurchase.com, the nation's premier tool for federal, state, and local contracting. Procurement Weekly keeps you abreast of the latest upcoming contract opportunities, bids, pre-solicitations, RFIs, sources sought, online government events, bid updates, success stories, procurement interviews, and much more. And now, with this week's show, here's your host, Kim Harwell. Welcome to Procurement Weekly. I'm your host, Kim Harwell. As you very well know by now, Procurement Weekly is about contracts now. Where is the money? Who is winning? Who is awarding? Who are the contact people? What are the patterns? What is the market intelligence? And how do you win or win more? As you know from the very beginning, our goal has been to help small businesses and all businesses for that matter stay in business and survive and even thrive during these times and we've helped to do that combined with this show and our newsletter procurement daily we have seen small businesses and other mid-tier and large businesses win billions of dollars in contracts and some of it's been from opportunities they've seen in our newsletter and on this show so we will continue thanks to our sponsors for free to bring you the hottest federal, state, and local contract opportunities. And this will be good for prime contracting, subcontracting, teaming, and even some commercial business. Because again, the government, especially the federal government, but all governments are spending more money than ever right now. And guess what? It's all online. So by popular demand, will feature the following categories and this first one is a first for us and we're doing it because we've had so many calls and emails for this and that first category will be janitorial congratulations we're doing janitorial and our second category is manufacturing we need more US manufacturing and our third category will cover general COVID-19 opportunities which can run the gamut as you know and in our fourth category we'll cover one of your favorites and this market has stabilized now there's been a lot of weeding out in this market PPE and of course we will finish up with the big roundup of winners who's winning where's the money who's spending it and everything that you need in order to see who's winning and how you could win and in many cases how you can win more but before we go any further I'd like to thank our sponsors for all of their support our sponsors along with Gov Purchase is the reason we can provide this information to you at no charge and we know businesses are winning thanks to the newsletter and this show so thank you to the largest manufacturer of automotive electronical components in the world, Bosch. The largest manufacturer of speakers in the world, Bose. They make speakers for tanks and jets. The Department of Defense, especially Washington Headquarters Services at the Pentagon. The Department of Justice, especially the FBI and federal prison systems. The Association of Government Contractors, that's my organization. Vaughn Marino and the whole team over at GovConnects. Joe Wynn and the whole team over at Vets Group. Ken Harris and the team over at National Business League, Weatherhaven, James Page and Page Global, one of our best sponsors, North Carolina State University, Rod Rickman and the big team over at Rickman Enterprise doing great work during this time, Army Property, Sherman Powell, Hutchison, the Run Flat Company, Dow Corning, Mid-Tier Advocacy Group, Tanya Saunders, the RFP Success Company, the Department of Veteran Affairs, Playbook Investors Network, Rodney Woods, Choice Cybersecurity, SAIC, and our newest sponsor, the United States Veterans Chamber of Commerce. I am proud to serve on the board with Congressional Medal of Honor winner, Buddy Buka and um, Chris Dolman. God rest his soul and condolences to the family of NFL Hall of Famer, my fraternity brother and board member, Chris Dolman. Thank you, the United States Veteran Chamber of Commerce, Adrian Guillermo and Mike Sikaya for all the great work that you do. This was an organization inspired by Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut. Thank you. 
Thank you for all the work you do to help veteran businesses stay in business, thrive, and win business. And if you'd like to become a sponsor of Procurement Weekly, or if you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter, or you have any success stories that you'd like to report, please email us at info at govpurchase.com. Now, let's get down to business. In our first section, we'll feature janitorial opportunities. Now, here's the thing about janitorial. Most janitorial for small business is local. Most janitorial companies cover a city, a few cities, county, a few counties, maybe the state, and then some of the mid-small janitorial companies will cover multiple states. And there are a few out there that will cover the entire country. That's because they've done a great job at teaming, or they're part of a franchise, or they just have the capacity and they will travel, especially during these times with all the deep cleaning opportunities available. And some of them are pretty large. And many, many, many janitorial opportunities are always set aside for small business. So let's take a look at some great janitorial opportunities. Now for our first section, janitorial. And again, this is by popular demand. There were many requests for janitorial, so we finally decided to give it a shot. This first one is from the Department of Agriculture. And it is a total small business set aside which is a great opportunity. And the government requires performance of the work described in the documents which are attached to this RFP, Request for Proposal, for the custodial services located at the Coyote Ranger District State Highway 96. And this is in Coyote, New Mexico. So you can see all of the uh, documents and related documents, as well as contact information. So that's our first janitorial opportunity. Let's take a look at another one here. This one's from the Department of Defense. Success Lake. USA, U.S. Army Engineer District, Sacramento. And another total small business set aside, which means you have to be a small business in order to uh, bid or write a proposal for this. And prospective bidders are strongly urged to visit the work area prior to bidding on this contract. The work required under this contract for office janitorial services at the administration area and the tool recreation area at Success Lake. And Success Lake is located in Tular County, California. So there you are. And of course, again, the related documents and your contact people. So let's see what else we have here, janitorial. Okay, here's another one from the Department of Agriculture. Hidden Springs Ranger District in Illinois. So what you're finding is Many janitorial opportunities are available this time of year. Another total small business set aside. Good day for small businesses. And this contract will be for outdoor restroom cleaning across the Shawnee National Forest in southern Illinois. And it's for the Hidden Springs Ranger District. And you don't have much time all of the related documents and contact information. All right, and here's another one, Department of Agriculture, Mississippi Bluffs. Okay, another total small business set aside. So far it's been a shutout for uh, small businesses. And this one is, again is for restroom cleaning across Mississippi Bluffs Ranger District and all of the documentation is here as well as contact information and we have one more in janitorial
All right, here we go. Now this one is from the state of Ohio. Material and support for, for Ohio Penal Industries, OPI, janitorial, laundry, and personal care product manufacturing. Invitation to bid. It's been posted, but it does not open until June 19th. So you can contact us at info at govpurchase.com or just try to uh, track this through the state of Ohio procurement. And that was our janitorial section. And this week, back by popular demand, we'll cover manufacturing opportunities. The United States manufacturing community is woefully underserved. And we've gone from a manufacturing country, from the arsenal of democracy, to a service-based company. And if we've learned anything, one thing, from this COVID-19 epidemic, is that we need to have more manufacturing done right here in the United States. So we at Procurement Weekly and Gov Purchase have always supported manufacturers. And I want you to pay attention to this segment, even if you're not a manufacturer, distributor of parts and products, because it's a different animal. You need tech, you need specs, you need drawings, you need pricing data. And we have that, we'll show it to you. So take a look. I know you manufacturers have been asking for this and chopping at the bit and you machine shops and we gave it to you last week and we're giving it to you again. But if you're not a manufacturer distributor, maybe you thought about it. Just take a look at what it entails. Okay, next let's cover our manufacturer section. And by popular demand, we're doing manufacturing again this week. So let's take a look at this first one. This is a sliding door track. And anytime you see last name, comma, first name, that's a nomenclature. That's the technical name. So let's take a look at the solicitation first. It's a PDF. Let's open it and see what we have here. Now, what you'll notice, it, although it's 24 pages, most of these RFQs, it's not an RFP request for proposal. It's an RFQ. Most of these are pretty standard. So after a while, you'll kind of gloss over some of these points and get to the main point here. You don't want to miss anything, but again, this is pretty standard language. Much of this comes from the FAR, but you definitely want to know the quantity. Now, a gov purchase, we tell you the quantity anyway. And then your job as the quoter, as the manufacturer and or distributor is to include a unit price and a total price. Now let's take a look at that part. Get more detail on it. See what's up with it. All right. Oh, one more thing. Let's take a look at one more thing. They want 176 of these. That's important. So now let's take a look at it. All right. It's a $1,600 part. Let's see who's purchased it in the past. All right. These are the companies who've sold it. Excuse me. The last sale was 1.5 million. Before that, 1.3 million. You can see the price per unit has been pretty steady. It's actually gone down, up and down over the years. There are lots of reasons for that. One could be small business set aside. One could be quantity. It all depends. All right. So let's go back now. Let's take a look at some of the technical data. Let's take a look at one of the drawings here. See what we have. Let's rotate this baby counterclockwise. All right, so the first one are die cuts, dimensions, etc. And as you can see here, there are many, many drawings and technical data. And in Gov Purchase, you could always download them all at once. So, again, let's go back, take a look at the part. $1,600, so that's uh, 176, 1677. 176 $1,675,000, $295,152. Not a bad haul for that particular part right now. So let's go on to the next one. Let's look at this uh, straight heatle rod. Again, it's a PDF. Just downloaded it. And there it is. 
So you're already starting to get the hang of these. For you machine shops who may not be in the business, who want to know, well, how do you sell to the government? How do you quote? It looks so complicated. As you can see, once you're in the business, you kind of breeze through a lot of this because there's a certain point you want to get to. And where you want to get to is that quantity and some of the technical data, which you'll always find in Gov Purchase anyway. And then again, your job is unit price and total price. Now let's take a look at the part. Because how do you know if it's even worth your time quoting it? Let's take a look. So the last award price was $7.81, $7.81. Here's the history. You want to make sure that $7.81 was not an anomaly, and it wasn't. As you can see, it's held steady right around 7 and some change historically. You can see the companies that have sold the part. And for you distributors, sometimes you're looking for sources. You can go right to the source, contact information and all. And it's a pin, so there's not much to look at. But if you are manufacturing this part, you do need this information right here. And I know this looks familiar to uh, some of you machine shops and other manufacturers and distributors of parts and products. And for the record, let's go back one more time. It's a basically an $8 part. So that's a $248,000 order. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, let's take a look at one more. Let's take a look at this uh, webbing. All right. Take a look at the PDF first. And I mean, if you're a manufacturer of this kind of product, this is what you do. Or you have someone, you train someone. And then we train people within your company as well, for the record. That's what our analysts and trainers are, are, are for. And they're on deck right now. Basically to show them how to find the right opportunities and help you make intelligent bid, no bid decisions. There are 5,700 of these that are wanted right now. And again, your main job, once you've determined whether or not it's worth your while is unit price and total price. Now let's take a look at this particular uh, item inside of Gov Purchase because we happen to have all the specs right here. So it's $11.24 uh, part. That's $68,068. And let's look at the award history. You can see the companies that have sold it in the past. Hardware components, obviously a distributor. There's Supply Core, one of the larger distributors. Peck and Hale. Some of these companies are pretty well known. And some of these companies are great sources as well for product, such as uh, Supply Core, Rockford, Illinois. Good company to do business with. We've done lots of business with them. So now let's see. There's not a lot to see from a drawing standpoint on a webbing strap. Mainly technical specs, that type of thing. But again, if you are the manufacturer of this, you need the information that's here. And that was our manufacturing section for today. In our next section, we'll cover general COVID-19 opportunities. This can run the gamut. Last week, we showed you a financial management opportunity from the Department of Treasury, who you know is handling billions of dollars right now. Also, we showed you a cybersecurity COVID-19 related opportunity from the Department of Treasury because, you, as you know, there are hackers out there that would love to get their hands on some of those trillions of dollars. So, let's take a look at some general COVID-19 opportunities. In this next section, we will look at some general COVID-19 opportunities. Now these could be uh, janitorial, they could be uh, product, they could be some other type of service, like this first one from Department of Housing and Urban, Urban Development, HUD, is actually a financial risk management requirement. And it's what we call sources sought. 
So HUD is seeking cer a certain type of business to see how many of those businesses are capable of providing this service. And they're looking for small businesses in this case. And here in the first part of the description, it describes what a, sor a source is sought is. Next code is 541611. And they're looking for a contractor to support, analyze the hospital portfolio and provide comprehensive financial risk management services. And then you have some historical information here and a detailed description of work here. And so again, if this is something that your company qualifies for, then be strongly recommended to, to uh, reply to this two to $3 million sources sought. And this isn't as extensive as an RFP request for proposal. They just want certain information. And then you have attachments and your contact person. So that's a great sources sought opportunity if you provide those type of services. Let's look at this second one uh, from the Department of Veteran Affairs. Now, this is actually a construction opportunity, COVID-19 related. And what uh, VA is looking for in this case is a tran transitional dialysis room to be built. Then all of the information, detail upon detail upon detail are right here. And in your contact person there at the bottom. And let's take a look at one more here. Let's take a look at this opportunity uh, for uh, strategic testing, state of Massachusetts. And we will proceed. All right. So basically the state of Massachusetts is looking for strategic testing expansion program. And they're asking for companies to respond. And there's information here. And again, you can either reach out directly to the state of Massachusetts or you can contact us at info at govpurchase.com. And that was our general COVID-19 section. GovPurchase.com, the nation's premier tool for federal, state, and local contracting, proudly presents the new television show, Procurement Weekly. Procurement Weekly is all about contracts now. What contracts are available? Who do you contact? Who is winning these contracts? We spotlight the agencies and companies that are awarding these contracts, and we tell you who the contact person is who awarded that contract. Procurement Weekly, featuring success stories by telling you who the winners are. And these times, staying up to date is vitally important, and Procurement Weekly will keep you abreast of the latest upcoming contract opportunities. So now, be sure to watch this week's episode of Procurement Weekly with your host, Kim Harwell. This Sunday at 1 p.m. on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. In our next section, let's take a look at some PPE opportunities. This is one of your favorite categories. And I have to tell you, the market has stabilized quite a bit. And as it turns out, the companies that were in the supply chains that have the uh, logistics, that have the financial wherewithal, that have the supply chain management skills, are the companies that are winning these contracts. Unfortunately, a couple of large small business contracts had to be pulled and reissued as full and open because the small businesses couldn't deliver. When that happens, it hurts all small businesses. Nevertheless, small businesses are delivering millions of N95 masks, regular masks, gowns, and other PPE. But the market has stabilized. And you will see now that there are several companies, small, medium, and large, that are consistently now winning PPE contracts. Because at the end of the day, this is personal protection equipment for our heroes, our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, and everyone that's been on the front line fighting to help us survive during this COVID-19 epidemic. 
So that being said, let's take a look at some PPE opportunities. In our next section, let's take a look at one of your favorites as well as mine, PPE. Now I'll tell you something that's happening with PPE now. The market is starting to stabilize and it has flushed out some of the startup or fly-by-night PPE companies and the companies that have been traditionally in the supply chain have been positioned a lot better to sustain and win contracts and get involved with multiple award contracts like the first one that we'll take a look at from FEMA. All right, so basically this one still goes through September 30th and it's just letting us know that awards are anticipated to be made before the solicitation closes. And of course, the purpose of this requirement is to obtain personal protection equipment to support FEMA. And the government anticipates award of separate single awards to multiple vendors for the commercial items listed within this uh, solicitation. And it is a BPA, uh, blanket, blanket Purchase Agreement. And they're your contact people right there. So again, at this point, the cake is pretty baked. There are certain companies who have positioned themselves well to win these awards as they roll out between now and September 30th. But per the Freedom of Information Act FOIA, you have the ability to see everything that's going on. And perhaps if you're not already, maybe participate. So let's take a look at another one. Here's another one. It's also from FEMA, who is kind of taking the lead now for federal government, non-military for PPE. This one ends September 25th. And this is basically a change to an existing RFP. To just change a few clauses, as you can see here. It also um, updated the contractor responsibility. And the number one thing, again, is they want the contractor to have adequate financial resources to perform the contract. This is important now. And they must have the capability to comply with the required or proposed delivery or performance schedule. Because these are things that had not been happening previously in certain cases with small business PPE awards. You have to disclose any filings for bankruptcy, etc. So they had to update this particular large multiple award opportunity because of certain failures in some cases. And we just will leave it at that. You guys get it. So now let's take a look at this one. Uh, this, this is a state opportunity. And it's from the state of Utah and it's for PPE and medication dispensary services. So again, it's from the state of Utah. You can contact us here at info.govpurchase.com for more information or try going directly to the state of Utah. And then let's look at one more here. And this is an RFI, Request for Information. And this is from the state of Alaska. So Alaska is setting up to make sure that they have a, enough PPE and so for future reference, they want uh, more information. So that's a request for information for PPE from the state of Alaska. And that was our PPE section. In our last section, it's all about the winners. We want to know, this is news, who's winning? Some of the viewers of this show and the subscribers to our daily newsletter, 
combined have won billions of dollars in contracts. We want to know who some of those companies are. We also want to see who's awarding the contracts. What are the dollar amounts? Are there small businesses winning? What about veteran-owned businesses, speaking of the United States Veterans Chamber of Commerce? You know, what about minority businesses, women-owned businesses? Who's winning these contracts? Who are the winners? Who, what, when, why, and how? We'll cover some of that in this section. We can cover more of that if you contact us at info at govpurchase.com. But without further ado, let's take a look at some of the winners. Here we are in our final section, the lightning round. Who are the winners? Let's see what's happened so far this week. All right, so first, let's check on some general manufacturing opportunities. 332710 is the machine shop next code. And let's see who some of the winners are. Oh boy, looks like there are quite a few. All right, let's sort some of this out. Okay, Dameco Inc. for a 87 patrol, a 87 inch patrol bolt propeller, 39,000 or 390,000. Sorry, and then here's a small business, Central Engineering, who uh, won a great contract with NASA. Congratulations. Brimhall Industrial, Department of Interior, to fix uh, speed vertical turbine. Another small business, VI or 4 Manufacturing Inc. And then uh, Quantum Lean sold a nozzle for $73,297 to the Navy, and it was a small business set aside. CNC Metal Works. Um, 53,000 to NASA. Microtech Machine Company, 50,000 to NASA. So some great machine shops won some good little contracts. Again, another one with NASA. T&M Machine Shop. A lot of small businesses winning manufacturing contracts. Now let's take a look at janitorial and there are two ways to look at janitorial 561720 next code let's see all right and let's sort by total again okay so Akima Support Operations, Department of Health and Human Services, Janitorial Services, Waste Collection, etc. 6.1 million. Chimes District of Columbia, Janitorial Services for the Navy, 3.7 million. Goodwill Industries of Chesapeake, Social Security, 5.2 million. And then down we see one. Small Business De Design Build SE, Janitorial Services at VA in the Caribbean. An 8A Sole Source, All Native Synergies Company. And just for the record, All Native Synergies Company is in Winnebago, NE. <laughs> That's Nebraska. All right. Just having a little fun here. Here's another 8A. Exemplar Enterprises. And then you see here's a hub zone, 190,000. 190, Quality Coast Incorporated. They are in the hub zone, and that hub zone is in Chula Vista, California. So congratulations, Quality Coast Incorporated. And who's awarding some of these contracts? Here are some of the awardees, the awarders at the Department of Transportation. For instance, quite a bit in the janitorial department. 
some of the people awarding contracts, janitorial contracts for the Department of Veteran Affairs. And that was our janitorial section. So now let's keep it moving and let's look at some general COVID-19 and see what we find this week. See if there's anything new on the horizon. All right. Yep, Janssen, 3M, some of the same companies we saw before. So let's do a little something different here. Let's sort these COVID opportunities by small business. And then now let's sort by total. Asset group, Bixis, Bixel Solutions. And then someone asked, well, where's Bixel Solutions located? They're right here uh, in the Beltway, uh, Chain Bridge Road, Fairfax, Virginia. And uh, Marketplace Inc. So let's do a little bonus. And let's look at some uh, COVID 8A set-asides. 8A competed. See what's happening. So you do have a few. The main winner is Tantus Technologies, Inc., located in Arlington, Virginia. And then the, let's see. Someone had asked, well, what about service disabled veteran owned? Are they winning any COVID-19 related? And they could be under different categories. But under direct COVID, you have a few here. 95 South Janitorial Services, 530,000. WC Technical for Emergency Janitorial Services, congratulations. And of course, as usual, the agency awarding services that able veteran-owned small business contracts is the Department of Veteran Affairs, who does an exemplary job. And here are some of the uh, people awarding veteran-owned companies. Now let's see if there's anything new in PPE. And then after this, we'll do something a little different. All right. And some of these we've seen before. So as you can see, PPE is stabilizing. But let's say you're in IT and you provide IT services and you want to provide IT services to the government. You can look at open solicitations, but you'd be better off to find out what's coming up before it's published. If it's a service, seeing what's expiring. That way you can be three to six to nine months a year or even more ahead. So now let's do IT. Let's use next code 541512, which is a primary IT next code. And let's see what's expiring for the rest of this year. And just to make it interesting, let's do small business. So basically what you're looking at now are and there there are many and that's why it's taking uh, a couple seconds here what you're looking at now are the small business opportunities in it that are coming up for the rest of the year right on cue and again there's so many and you can see the estimated completion dates right here and a lot of these are coming up right now so what are your odds of winning an 18 million dollar small business contract that ends uh, in 30 days. Well, you can try reaching out to the agency and connecting with the decision makers to see. But conventional wisdom says that your, your chances aren't very good of winning this size of a contract that quickly. But maybe some of this low-hanging fruit it may be a little further out. So depending on the, the size and the scope, the dollar amount depends on how far in advance you need to be. And look at how much expires in September. 
And that's because the federal government's fiscal year ends in September. And it ends on September 30th. Look at how much expires on the 29th and now the 30th. Look at that. Look at that. So this is what um, this is what you hear about end of fiscal year spending. And the key is to be able to get to the decision makers at any given agency prior to the end of the fiscal year because they have to spend this money. It's called use it or lose it. So if they do not spend this money by September 30th, they lose it in the next fiscal year. And that was a bonus, expiring IT contracts, which is one way of using market intelligence to win upcoming IT and other service contracts. And that was our award section. Again, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors, Bosch, Bowles, Department of Defense, Department of Justice, Association of Government Contractors, Fetch Group, GovConnect, National Business League, Weatherhaven, Page Global, North Carolina State University, Rickman Enterprise, Army Property, Hutchison, Dow Corning, Mid-Tier Advocacy, RFP Success Company, Department of Veteran Affairs, Playbook Investors Network, Choice Cyber, SAIC, and our newest sponsor, United States Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And if you'd like to become a sponsor again, or you'd like to subscribe to our newsletter or report a success story, we've had quite a few success stories reported, just email us at info at govpurchase.com. And until next week, let's get down to business. GovPurchase.com, the nation's premier tool for federal, state, and local contracting, proudly presents the new television show, Procurement Weekly. Procurement Weekly is all about contracts now. What contracts are available? Who do you contact? Who is winning these contracts? We spotlight the agencies and companies that are awarding these contracts, and we tell you who the contact person is who awarded that contract. Procurement Weekly. Featuring success stories by telling you who the winners are. In these times, staying up to date is vitally important. And Procurement Weekly will keep you abreast of the latest upcoming contract opportunities. So now, be sure to watch this week's episode of Procurement Weekly with your host, Kim Harwell. This Sunday at 1 p.m. on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel.